Crypto spring transitions to crypto summer, and that's usually happens after the halving. And after the halving, you see something that I know everybody's getting shit for right now is if you go back to 2020, after the halving, what happened? ETH Bitcoin bottomed. Right. And then it started out, it's slowly based, and then it started out performing, right? That's when the market takes on risk and goes out the risk curve. And that's when you start to see Bitcoin dominance coming down, all of that kind of stuff. That's what the summer is. It's also altcoin season. It's when we hit what I commonly refer to as the banana zone, when everything goes bananas, <laughs> right? The bit of crypto magic. Now, this banana zone is interesting to me because we've got this new source of demand. This is the most reflexive market ever because the more people join the network, the more the price goes up, the more it encourages people to join the network, the more the price goes up. And obviously that reflexivity works in reverse, which is why we get strong bear markets. With the Bitcoin halving coming up in just a few short days, the crypto market is about to transition from crypto spring to crypto summer. This is the period after the Bitcoin halving when we see prices start to go on face melting parabolic moves upwards. This is the latest outlook from Real Vision CEO and macroeconomic expert Raul Paul. Raul refers to this period as the banana zone and it's when we see Bitcoin dominance start to fall and Ethereum and altcoins start to go parabolic. In his latest interview, Raul gives an updated price prediction for Bitcoin in this cycle, proposing a potential peak of $200,000, roughly 3x its current all-time high. Raul points out patterns in previous cycles, noting that after the 2020 halving, Bitcoin's price initially dropped, then experienced an exponential rise, outperforming all other investments. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Raul reveals his ultimate strategy to benefit most from the banana zone. Also guys, if you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing to the channel or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now here's Rob Paul with his predictions for both Bitcoin and crypto following the halving. So that's what crypto summer is all about. It's the FOMO, the madness, the insanity that crypto becomes. But it also drives adoption, drives money into the VC again. It flushes money through the system, allows people to build new product, which is the next cycle's gains and all of this stuff. So that's great. And then we go into fall. And this is where the complications lie. Crypto fall, which we historically 2025, they've generally finished at the end of the year. We don't really ever know exactly. I think this cycle's maybe started a bit earlier. I don't know. And falls can be the most tricky part. This summer is the easy bit. You just shut up and do nothing. <laughs> and number go up. Fall is tricky. So if you go back to 2013, we had a 50% sell-off. People thought it was done because it had already gone up, I don't know, 20x or something stupid. It then corrected 50%. Everyone thought it was over. And then it moon rocketed in a just a way you can't comprehend. Then you get to 2017. Same. 2017, everyone kind of thought it was over early summer. And then it did, I don't know, 10x from there. It was bananas, right? That is really hard to deal with because 2021 was a stunted cycle. We never got the accelerated final leg. We had the huge correction. It went up, poked its nose back up in the highs, collapsed. Everyone's got PTSD from that. The real money was made in those previous two bull markets in terms of percentage returns. Everyone now assumes it can only go up 3x from the all-time high. There is actually no evidence of that. Maybe something was weird in the last cycle because the other ones did a lot past the all-time highs. So how I think of it is a distribution curve. Middle is it kind of does what it's supposed to do until sometime mid H2 2025, it tops out, okay? That would be normal. That would be Bitcoin as a price target of, call it 200,000. Mm -hmm. something like that. You know, 3x the all-time high kind of thing. That's, I would give a 60% probability. I think there's a 20% probability that people who are calling this a left translated cycle, i.e. we brought forward demand because of the ETF, it dries up, we're overperforming for this stage in the cycle. I think people saying that tend to be one cycle people because they only saw the last cycle because others 
have outperformed earlier on. So anyway, okay, there's a 20% chance of that. Then there's a 20% chance that this turns into a full bone bubble cycle, a 2013, 2017, because of this new dynamics. Mm. You throw in an ETH ETF as well. You throw in, you know, the $65 billion of VC that went into the last cycle. Somebody comes up with some killer applications. Before you know it, there's 200 million people playing a game. There's, you know, stuff like this going on. Okay, that could create something crazier. And I'm continually assessing these probabilities in my head. And because I, there's so many people who I've note have PTSD from the last cycle, the stunted top, it's less translated, they're gonna take it away from us, starts to move my probabilities that you get a correction and then a spike. Basically, the world is underweight this asset because it's still a new asset and it's an adoption curve. So over time, more and more people join the network as investors or users. So I think we can see a second wave of panic into the Bitcoin ETF from people. You know, I was speaking to a good friend of mine who's kind of very well-known hedge fund manager or ex-hedge fund manager and one of the the billionaire crowd. And he's like, Raul, when do you think Bitcoin hits 100,000? I said, probably the summer, mm. you know, with the kind of demand and the ETF. It kind of feels like the sometime in the summer. So much wealth is getting made in crypto. It's making the billionaire class. Cycles are a function of the space. Everybody is so scarred. If you're in this for the long run, accept them. Don't even care about them. I didn't do a damn thing over the last down cycle because I've been through one before. So I skipped one, I've done two out of the three, so I've got uh, my stripes, but I did what I didn't do the first one, I did properly this time, which was I bought as much as I could, given whatever cash flow I can, I could get in the depths of the bear market. I mm. did the right thing. And people think they can be clever and cute. They think, oh, I'm gonna time this thing. We've already talked about how difficult Crypto fall is, do you have a spike? Does it finish early? You don't know. The easier game is to say, I don't care. I'm just gonna continue buying it. But then there's another thing is like, some people, they've particularly in the first cycle or even the second cycle, it starts to really matter. Like, I can do with this cash. I wanna buy a house, I wanna do with it. Do that. If you're lucky enough, you could sell half your portfolio, completely secure lifestyle gains in whatever that means to you, and then, you just run the rest and enjoy the bear market for the ridiculousness that it is. All of the drama, who's going to go bust, whose leverage got caught out, all of that. Just go with it. It doesn't matter. As long as you're self-custodying your tokens, it really, none of it touches you. You just kind of laugh at it and then try and add to it. So you take some off the table if you want. I didn't purposely because I did not want to take anything off the table. I wanted to just keep adding to it because here's a different thing. So let's say you put $1,000 in, it goes up to $10,000, you're feeling amazing, and you time the top. You time the top, you take it out, your $1,000 means a lot to you, and the market's now down 75%. You will not put in $1,000. You just won't do it. Everybody psychologically thinks, well, I just take out the top and buy it back down. You won't, you'll put in $100. And then before mm -hmm. you know it, you're chasing it all the way up and you've just fucked the whole thing up to start with. Just. You just don't need the stress. So take some chips off the table, just run the rest and then add when you can. This is all driven by the liquidity cycle. It's actually a macro cycle driven by mm -hmm. the refinancing of government debts because everybody reset interest rates to zero in 2008. They set their government debts all at three to five years, gives us a four year cycle. Mm -hmm. That was the exact point, uh, the launch of Bitcoin. It's also the US presidential election cycle. It's all the same thing. and. Election cycles, they give out candy to the kids, which is their way of stimulating. So it's all part of this stimulus cycle and debt for refi cycle. So I don't think that changes because the debt issue is still too big. What is the nuance of the cycle normally? We've only got three data points, but the crypto spring, which is the first year after the bear market, this has been a strong one. You know, Bitcoin was up 150% or whatever. So that's pretty strong because we brought an extra source of demand in, as you allude to with the mm -hmm. ETF. But that actually came later, but it was front running by hedge funds and participants. Right. What, what we have observed is things that are getting adoption that are earlier on the adoption curve outperform. So ETH killed it last cycle. Mm. 
as a chain going from, it's been proven now, it's gone through its bad times, Lindy effect in play, okay, now it then exploded 47x from the, from the low, right? And then established itself firmly as the second most dominant player in the space. If you remember last cycle, there was three breakouts, really? Well, four, one was Luna, that went. Uh, three breakouts, one was Solana, one was Avalanche, and the other was probably Polygon. Now, who was the winner? Well, the one that got the most adoption ended up being Solana. It was the one that came from the bottom down 97.5% from this cycle, like ETH was the previous cycle. It's gone into now accepted as an adopted ecosystem at scale. Who's the next one? Who's the next Solana, the next ETH of this cycle? That's where the real money gets made. Because those first cycle, you've got nothing to compare it against. You can't say, oh, it's already up 5x versus all-time high. You've got nothing, just blue sky charts. And that's why you tend to get these ridiculous first first time runs, like Solana last time. And I'm very interested in what that's going to be. I've got two or three ideas what it might be, mm -hmm. but who the hell? I mean, I'm just not good at this get. I'm good at the next bit, which is see what's getting adoption properly. And then that one, that trade is relatively easy. <laughs> this trade is, is more difficult to figure out what is it going to be. I think it's the move protocol. That's the Sui Aptos, you know, may the best man win kind of game there because it's different, has a lot of different use cases. And then there's Cosmos, mm. Celestia and others. Those feel like, okay, that's the game to be played. Maybe Avalanche again, but doesn't feel like it should have happened. It got it last cycle. Doesn't feel like it's getting full scale adoption. It's kind of in that lower tier, you know, Layer twos, that's a whole different game being played out, but that's not this game. So that's that's how I'm thinking about it. And and there could be something else entirely that I've missed just because it's not on my radar screen, because, you know, when it happens, it happens fast. So there's Raul Paul affirming the massive rise of crypto after the halving. As Raul said, we are going into crypto summer, and this is a phase of the market where we can reap huge profits and gain enormous wealth. He discusses his perspective on the potential outcomes for Bitcoin's price movement, stating that there are three main scenarios. First off, a scenario in which Bitcoin reaches around $200,000 by mid-2025, which Raul believes represents a 60% probability. Second, an accelerated cycle, where crypto demand peaks earlier due to factors like ETF adoption with a 20% probability. And third, Raul envisions a full-blown bubble cycle similar to 2013 to 2017, driven by new catalysts such as an Ethereum ETF and significant venture capital investment. This Raul pegs at a 20% chance. Raul acknowledges the uncertainty and complexity of predicting market movements and the psychological impact of past experiences on investors' perceptions. Despite this, he expresses relief that the current year presents fewer concerns, allowing for a more relaxed approach to investing. Before we go, a quick reminder for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast-paced world of crypto and Bitcoin, consider subscribing to our daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news, and top on-chain analysis trusted by over 60,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Click the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.